Good evening to all my uh, fellow Ford lovers. This is Brent with Lackens Motorsports. And these are our street small block Ford tunnel port heads. And I uh, got these all machined up and they are ready to assemble. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, just as a recap, I have two uh, tunnel port, small block tunnel port builds going on for, for Mr. Mark. And this one is going to, um, we went over uh, the, the engine part of it, the bottom end part of it. Uh, a few weeks ago, we're using a Boss 302 block. And um, we're going to stay with a, uh, a stock stroke and uh, not do any port work to the heads. And uh, just throw a hydraulic roller in it and um, some good parts in the bottom end. And just see what this engine would have done, um, you know, back in the day so um just as some for some prep work uh bronze valve guides installed so that and and all this milled down so that we can use uh some some modern spring components we're going to go over those in a second um and uh, we weren't able to do uh the steel abrader to the heads and uh, the reason for that is because of these push rod tubes uh, when you put the heads in the steel abrader, uh, it's basically shot, uh, shot with steel shot. And uh, that's what makes the heads come out clean. Um, but we were afraid, since these are brass tubes, um, that we would do a lot more damage to those than, than what we needed to do. So uh, they were cleaned and then uh, glass beaded. Um, to clean them up. So I did that and um, knocked all the heads of nasty uh, paint that were on, that was on them before and I put a, a nice new coat of uh, ceramic satin black to match the engine block. Um, so they're they're looking pretty sharp. So the valves are um, I had a horrible time trying to get valves for these. Uh, it, it's very hard to get anything right now. It really is. And I had some Ferrea valves and they just were not the right size. Um, so I returned those and we got some Mylodon stainless valves. I don't know who makes the valves for Mylodon, but um, they're, they're modern stainless valve, high, high quality. Um, these are 1,950 and they weigh just 118 grams um, so so fairly light these are a little bit longer than a standard small block four valve um, the exhaust valves are uh, manley's these are 1 500 and uh, they're 105 grams both of these are 11 30 second stem use a square uh, square lock not a bead lock um, for the valve train components, um, since we have these guides, uh, these are 500 outside diameter on the seal surface, so we can use some um, uh, Viton uh, metal body seals. The spring is going to be one of these comp cams beehives, since we're running a hydraulic roller, we're going to use a beehive spring. Um, comp cams spring locator to go with those. And then the retainer is going to be these comp cams. Um, these are tool steel retainers. So almost as light as the titanium, just you don't have to pay for the titanium. But uh, just a good quality combo there. Then we'll finish this up with some, I've got some adjustable AFR uh, two piece guide plates and some ARP rocker arm studs. So, um, first thing to do is, uh, they've been washed and I'm just going to go through and swab the guys out one more time to make sure we're clean. And then we're going to start checking for our install heights. Just a little bit on this side. Um, not much seat under those valves. So the, the odd thing is that they appear to have been ported. I don't know. Um, I think I flowed these couple months ago and put it on the video but um 
I mean, they were better, a whole lot better than, you know, a stock small block Ford head. Um, but for the port volume, um, you know, that's kind of a wash because they're, they're so huge. But um, don't have a lot of room to do a nice multiple angle valve job. So it's pretty simple on that part. But everything is just really smooth like they've been ported and touched up. Um, Ford part numbers, pretty cool. Got all kinds of good stuff for the nostalgia Ford guys on, on the stampings. And we got this 572, 574, 577. I'm not really for sure what, what those mean. But, uh, and then again, the, uh, the XE stampings. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so um, I'm gonna try to set the springs up um, the way that they're shown as advertised. One, uh, this is of course what they're saying, and I'm gonna check it here in a second, but I wanna aim for uh, this 1925 number for 150 pounds of seat pressure, and um, our cam is about 630 lift. So we're gonna be almost to this 1275. So I expect we're gonna be around 400 pounds open, which is good. And um, on pre preliminary measurements, um, I won't have to do any shimming on the exhaust valve, but I think I'm gonna have to add about 45 thousandths worth of shims on the intake side. And yes, I know that my retainer is not sitting on the top. Um, I've got a plethora of um, spring mics, but for this particular retainer just does not sit perfectly on my beehive spring mic. So what I've done is I've measured from this step down to where the retainer sits and I just deduct that from my measurement. So um, we're going to stick the spring in, and the retainer in our spring tester and see what we come up with at that 1925 and at uh, 6 uh, 630 lift and then check our coil bind to see uh, what our preliminary coil bind measurement is. I will go through and check all 16 of these puppies. Um, these have been known to vary uh, by about 30 thousandths on coil bind height. So want to make sure that we don't get into any specific situations there with coil bind on valve springs, not good stuff. Um, but uh, let's, let's see what our pressures are. Okay, so we're gonna go down to 1925. And we are at about, about as advertised, 149 pounds, 150 pounds. And then we're gonna go, since we have a 630 lift cam, we're gonna go down to 1295. And check our open spring pressure. And that's about what I figured it would be, 390, 395 pounds. So we will document that and we'll check the other springs. All right, so once we verified all of our spring um, specifications, we can go through and adjust all of our install heights. These were pretty much all the same, except for one I had to add uh, another 15,000 shim, but we got them all dialed in there. Um, I'll drop the valves out now and um, put our valve seals on and then lube the valves up and get those back in there and then it'll be time to get our springs and retainers on all right seals are on valves are greased just one more thing to check retainer to valve seal clearance we have about 700 yards and here we are with one assembled cylinder head it's a great looking combination right there. Everything looking good. Now is uh, time to hop to the next one. All right, so we're moving on to the second head. The second head had some kind of a repair on it from who knows how far back, but uh, based on just experience with this stuff, I mean, it pressure tested okay, it milled okay, it is flat, it is smooth. I'm not going to, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to poke a dragon in the face and try to get at some of this stuff. So, um, 
we're gonna run it and and see how it does if you pressure test it okay i'm sure it'll work out just fine head gasket will cover the majority of it but uh that's that's kind of uh, one of the drawbacks from working with you know 50 and 60 year old parts they've been ran hard they've been repaired and um it is what it is but uh i don't have any qualms about running this and we'll do so and if something comes up we'll address it on the dyno it's as simple as that all right so we're going to get on to um assembling the second head and we're almost done okay so this is the last head and it's fully assembled just really like doing old factory heads like this um you know upgraded to the way that we would do it uh in today's age you know bronze valve guides you know honed to the correct sizes um, modern valve seals, modern valve springs and valve train components, uh, modern valves with, you know, the correct up-to-date shapes, you know, that we know that flow more and uh, are more higher performance. So just like to see projects like this. We are done. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these, I'm going to bolt them temporarily to the block because the block is nice and bagged up and uh, we're waiting on pistons. Pistons will probably be another, I don't know, nine or 10 weeks, I would imagine. But uh, so we're kind of stuck in a holding pattern until uh, the pistons show up and we can get our crank balance and that sort of thing. But uh, that's gonna be it for today. We did get our manifold back for the 427 medium riser engine build it needed 12 thousandths to make it perfect and it is now perfect and uh, it looks great it's not bolted down yet because uh, we're still waiting on push rods trend told me that they would be 12 weeks so uh i deal with trend smith brothers and manton smith brothers had push rods in stock and they were on their way from the west coast or from almost near the west coast to here so when they get here um Intake will come off, push rods will go down, we'll bolt the rockers down to make sure that we do have correct preload on our lifters. And uh, we'll, we'll prime the oil pump again uh, to make sure that the lifters do what they're supposed to do before the intake goes on. But uh, we're a couple weeks away probably from, from hearing this one run. All right, guys, uh, thank you very much for, for watching. Um, got a lot of Ford stuff on here, so if you're a Ford fan if you're a ford lover then stick around we got a lot more things coming down the pipe if you haven't already hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of it hope y'all have a good weekend i'll see you soon